Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk a little bit more about the surface of the planet Mercury. And again, taking a look at pictures, uh, the basic thing you see is just craters. Craters and craters everywhere, very unique. And there's one big thing that we can tell about the fact that there are so many craters and that they're everywhere around the surface. That is an indication that the surface itself is old. What we mean by that is that there hasn't been any real geological activity for potentially billions of years because there's no place where the surface has been resurfaced by that geological activity. If there had been any significant volcanic activity, the, the magma coming out of the uh, volcanoes would have covered the surface and would have erased some of the evidence of the craters. So whenever we see regions where there's fewer craters, that would be a region where we'd say that the surface has been renewed through some activity. Now, of course, since there's no atmosphere on Mercury, you wouldn't have any kind of weathering. You wouldn't have any wind. There's no liquid water on the surface, so you don't have any erosion because of the water, because of the wind action, and because of uh, snow melt, and because of things like what, what we normally see on the Earth, would not be the case on Mercury. So many of these craters, especially the big ones, have probably been there for billions of years. And the only thing that has changed is that over time, additional craters will have formed at a much slower rate these days compared to several billion years ago. So the assumption is that probably not a lot has changed on Mercury for the last three and a half to 3.8 billion years near the end of the last big bombardment that we had in our solar system. But let's take a look and see what kind of things we know about the surface of Mercury and which kind of sets Mercury apart from the other planets. So again, at first look, not really much stands out. We don't see any particular mountain ranges that are unusual. We don't see any huge volcanoes. We don't see any uh, evidence that water has flowed, that there might be big canyons created by the water flow, things like that. But what we do see, there are enormous numbers of impact impact craters everywhere on the surface. Matter of fact, we have identified roughly 375,000 craters from photographs taken by the two spacecraft, Mariner 10 and Messenger. About 150 of these are greater than 100 kilometers across. That's more than 60 miles across. Those are big craters. And understanding that the size of the object needed to make a crater 100 kilometers across is about one-tenth the size. So that would make it about 10 kilometers across to make a crater 100 kilometers wide. That's six miles across. Those are huge impacts. And the fact that there's over 150 of them, or about 150 of them, Mercury is being pummeled by some large objects. And of course, some of the craters are much bigger than 100 kilometers across. So we can assume that if Mercury has been pummeled by that many craters or that, that many objects such as asteroids and comets, we can assume that all the other planets have been pummeled even more so because they're larger in size and therefore have a stronger gravitational force and are more likely to pull in these comets as they come whizzing by. They're also larger, so more likely to hit the object such as a larger planet versus Mercury. Now, if we look at the geography of the surface, we find again that it's fairly uniform. There's no big heights and no deep valleys. The distance between the highest point and the lowest point of Mercury is roughly about nine kilometers, which puts it at about five and a half miles or so, which is much less than what we see on the Earth. Matter of fact, if we take the average height of the surface, the tallest mountain relative to about the average height is about 12,500 feet, which are the size of mountains you can find on any continent on the Earth and much taller than that. That puts it at about 3,500 meters. And those mountains are only found in one particular region on the surface, and we'll talk more about that as well. About 400 of the craters are named. That's kind of an interesting thing. If you ever want something challenging to do, try to memorize all 400 names. I didn't do that, but that would be quite interesting to do. And some of the names are actually quite hard to pronounce. Now, the elevation of the majority of the planet, like I said, varies not by a lot, by about 2,000 meters, which is roughly about 6,000 feet. So the vast majority of the planet's surface is only within about a 2,000 meter range in elevation. Oh, and by the name, on the names of the, uh, of the craters, they're named after artists, painters, writers, and things like that. So named after people that have, from all over the world, that have contributed greatly to our cultural advancement. 
So we'll see some of those names in a later video. Yes, the rock is primarily gray, kind of a lightish gray, but then depending upon how much sunlight falls on it, it's kind of a cool, darkish, lightish gray color. Most of it is from rock that has been cooled billions of years ago, so not a lot has changed. It's covered with a thick layer of dust, and where that dust comes from, not what you would think that you find in your house, but the dust we're talking about here is not only has mercury been pummeled by large object over the billions of years, but also by small object and from micro comets. In other words, very tiny little meteorites that come in and hit the surface and kind of pulverize the surface, probably billions upon billions of them across the surface. And this continued action over the billions of years has slowly ground down the surface of the planet in a way that we now see a lot of surface dust. This is simply the remnants of the impacts of all those tiny little impacts across the surface of the planet. Geologically inactive, so the dust definitely doesn't come from that. It's just the remnants of the impacts of the billions of, of impact. And so the activity is presumed to have been, uh, uh, let me try that again. So since the geological activity has basically st been stopped for billions of years, it's a, what we would call a dead planet. There's no longer geological activity. Any sort of uh, formation of mountains, any sort of volcanic activity probably happened a very, very long time ago. The only kind of things that we do see geologically is a very, if a very big impact happens, a very big object hits mercury, could potentially liquefy the air underneath and could presumably cause some volcanic activity. The ones that happened billions of years ago when the interior was still probably in a molten state, simply the big impacts would crack through the surface of the planet and the lava would well up in those areas. So we do see the bottoms of some of the very big craters covered with plains of lava or of course uh, not molten lava but solidified lava. We have things such as dorsa and rupes. The dorsa are what we call wrinkled ridges and rupees are escarpments and that's typically caused that one area of the planet has been uplifted versus another and so we have kind of like a cliff area that might run as, as many as tens or 50 or 100 kilometers long those are called escarpments and of course as we mentioned before not much happened since about 3.8 billion years ago when the major bombardment ended in our solar system the solar system was formed about 4.6 billion years ago and throughout the history of, of the solar system from 4.6 to about 3.8 billion years ago, there was a lot of debris in the solar system that kept on impacting into the moons and planets, making many of the, of the craters that we see today. After about 3.8 billion years ago, the bombardment slowed down by quite a bit. And so surfaces that have very little craters on them probably have been reserved since the end of the, the heavy bombardment of Mercury, not the case. We don't expect that a lot have happened since maybe the first 100, maybe 50 billion years since the planet formed. And so the planet solidified and therefore we have that many craters on the surface. So not a lot of mountain building, not a lot of volcanic activity, just craters and craters and craters by impact, not by volca volcanism. And so that kind of defines the surface of the planet Mercury.